Hi guys, I'm John from a &E Construction and this is my backstory. Tell me about yourself. About myself? Uh, what, there's, there's lots to tell about me. Um, so I'm a builder, I work for a &E Construction. Uh, I'm 38 years old, I live in Warwick. Why did you choose construction? Construction. So uh, I started at college uh, doing motorsport engineering and I got to an age where I liked going out a bit too much and I needed more money so I basically quit that and started doing a bit of this and a bit of that. Got into decorating uh, and then saw some plasterers come onto site one day and just liked the look of it really and gave that a go. Started with a company called Brixarus and they trained me up to be a plasterer and then it just sort of escalated from there really and then I've just learnt more trades along the way, more skills and yeah, I'm here today. Would you say you're primarily a plasterer or do you also do some of those other things as well? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm primarily a plasterer anymore, which is I'm quite grateful for to be honest. Plastering is a brilliant trade to be in, but it's messy and it's bad for your body, very bad. Um, so I'm happy that I'm, I'm multi-skilled really and I can do a lot of various things. Was that industry what you expected when you joined, the construction industry? No, it was a lie. <clears throat> I was told when I went into plastering that the labourer, obviously you start as a labourer, goes straight in, in the morning, gets there a bit earlier, mixes up loads of plaster for the plasterers and then gets to leave early and that didn't happen. I was there late. I was like, it was like four or five o'clock, that wasn't early. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, people have got conceptions about building and yeah, it was pretty much what I expected, apart from the normal finishes. What are some misconceptions about people in construction or even specifically some of the trades that you've done? Misconceptions are that people in trades are not very well educated or maybe aren't very upstanding citizens and stuff like that, you know, they aren't just great people to be honest, but it's complete rubbish. I mean, I know a lot of very intelligent, very well to do, very upstanding members of society that are in the building trade. Um, you know, obviously there are the odd few, but you're going to get that anywhere, to be honest. The building trade, if you're, if you're a good builder, then you're generally a good person, you care about what you do, and you've got good morals and you, you want to do a good job. You know, somebody's paying you money to do that, so you want to do the best you can for them to get their value for money. Do you have a project horror story where things went wrong or things almost took a turn for the worse? Um, there's loads of them, but I probably shouldn't say about it. <laughs> no, not, nothing really that stands out to be honest. There's nothing that's been awful. Actually, no, there is. So we were doing a job in Leamington and we had a lot of the house propped up with needles and we had to prop across the footing. And there's lots of acros holding this building up and it started absolutely torrential raining and the rain was washing the side of the footings away. Obviously we had no concrete in there, it's just a big ditch at this point. Um, and there's like acros on the edge of the footing and the earth's just washing away underneath them. So it was panic stations, get some more big steels to prop up underneath various places and bridge across. And yeah, that was a, a bit of a sketchy moment to be completely honest, but you know, we organised it well, kept our call, cool, got it sorted, and then had a little cry about it afterwards. On the flip side, was there a project you were most proud of? Probably that same project, to be honest. The the end of it, the end result was amazing. You know, the clients were really happy with it. It went really well. Um, I, personally, I couldn't fault it. I think it was it was good. You know, obviously, I'm going to be biased because I did a lot of it, but. It was just, the end result was was really, really nice, breathtaking in fact, so yeah, I would definitely like to live there and I think the clients are really happy with it as well. What's the most useful piece of advice you've gotten since joining the construction industry? Probably the most useful thing, a bit of advice that I've had. So when I started with A&E Construction, I wasn't like, I was up to scratch, I, you know, I had high standards, but my standards weren't there yet, if that makes sense. So when I was doing various bits, I can't remember exactly who said it to me now, but what you need to do when you're looking at a job is think, can you do it better? And if you can do it better, it's not good enough. 
So that's what I always base everything on now. If I do something and I think, oh, you know, I could probably do that a little bit better, I will just redo it because it's not the best I can do to my abilities and that's what I always want to be achieving, achieving is the highest possible standard. What's the construction end goal for your career? To live a long and happy and prosperous life in construction and build lots of people's houses that they love to live in. That's it really. Is there any trades you haven't gotten into that you want to try out a bit more or get more time with or? Um, probably bricklaying to be honest. Um, obviously being a plasterer I've, I'm used to working with wet materials and stuff like that. So plasterers and bricklayers tend to sort of be able to do each other's trades with a bit of, a bit of practice. Um, so yeah, bricklaying, that's something that's always quite fascinated me. Um, but I've not really had much chance to, to try that out, but I would definitely like to have a go at that. Where do you see the construction industry in five years? Or what will it look like? Uh, I would like to see a younger workforce coming through, um, but it just seems as if people don't really seem that interested in it, unfortunately, and we've got a bit of an aging workforce. So I, I would like to see lots of younger people coming into the trades and wanting to learn. I mean, there, don't get me wrong, there are a lot, but we need more. Where do you think the construction industry can improve? Same, you know, get, get more people in, more young people involved, try and appeal to them. Obviously be mindful of, you know, plastic waste, because I believe the construction industry is one of the greatest producers of plastic waste out of all the industries. Uh, everything you get is wrapped in plastic, you know, there's, there's got to be a way around that. So I think that's one of the things that needs to be more environmentally friendly, I guess. What would you say to someone who's thinking about getting a career in Go for it. It's good, it's fun, you get to work with people that may not be mates to start with but they will turn into your mates. You get to work in various places all the time, you get to work outside when it's sunny, you get to work inside when it's not. Sometimes it's the other way around but you know you can't have it all. You make good money and you've got skills for life. You know even if you decide to do something else you can always come back to it. Once you've got those skills you can use them in so many different areas. Do it. And if you're thinking of it, watch the rest of our videos and then that will obviously encourage you to do it more. Thank you for your time, John. Appreciate it. Cool. Thank you.